You might think that your local police force is pretty scary and capable of keeping local residents in line. And sure, they probably are quite scary if you're on the wrong side of the law, but they're nowhere near as frightening as some special forces. From the German Federal Police's Elite Counterterrorism Unit to the United States Special Operation Command, here are 20 most elite special forces in the world. Number 20. Golden Division if you thought ISIS was scary and dangerous, which they are, these soldiers are 100 times more dangerous than an army. They are known as the Golden Division and they're a special forces soldier brigade trained by the US to fight ISIS on the front line. They truly are a force to be reckoned with. Many people describe them as brave commandos and they stand out from other military groups and special forces by their terrifying looking skull masks. Now, the masks might help them identify each other in a crowd, but they're also a pretty good scare tactic. I mean, aside from all the guns and weapons, which are scary enough, the masks just take that fear factor to the next level. They were also making waves back in 2016. They took six districts back from ISIS in Mosul, a prominent northern Iraq city, and became the first Iraqi unit to successfully enter the Gojali quarter of the city during the offensive. The city then quickly re-entered the control of the Iraqi army. The scary-looking fighters form part of Iraq's 1st Commando Battalion, and they have the same training as U.S. Army Rangers. According to Golden Division commanders, their members are worth 1,000 ISIS fighters. Honestly, you'd probably be shaking in your boots if you were fighting for ISIS. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. EKO Cobra EKO Cobra, or Task Force Cobra, is the police tactical unit in Austria under the Federal Ministry of the Interior. Rather than forming part of the Federal Police, they answer directly to the Federal Ministry. In its early days, EKO Cobra was formed by the Regional Police Authority to protect Jews from East Europe against terrorist threats as they migrated to Israel via Austria. However, their tactical skills made them quite helpful in other areas, so their missions became much broader in the years after. They've been involved in many serious situations over the years, including a hostage rescue from the Graz Karlau prison in 1996, an airplane hijacking attempt, and the evacuation of EU citizens during the 2006 Lebanon War. Okay, go. EKO Cobra is an elite unit, and only the very best get to join. Any Austrian federal police member can apply, and you must undergo many different physical, psychological, and medical tests and examinations. When you successfully complete the tests, you undergo six months of specialized training in hand-to-hand -hand combat, driving, abseiling, tactical training, marksmanship, and more. You can even enhance your training further over the years by learning sniping, diving, parachuting, and even explosives. Since EKO Cobra's establishment in 1978, more than 1,140 have served. Number 18. New Zealand Special Air Service New Zealand might be a small country of 5 million people, but you would not want to underestimate it. They have the New Zealand Special Air Service, described by the New Zealand government as a premier combat unit of the New Zealand Defense Force. The first New Zealand Special Air Service Regiment was officially formed in 1955 as the New Zealand Army's Special Forces Unit and has been put to work in many challenging environments, such as Afghanistan, Southeast Asian jungles, and the Pacific region. They're responsible for counterterrorism and special operations like disposing of radiological, nuclear, chemical, biological, and explosive hazards in these areas. All members of the New Zealand Special Air Service have a vital part to play, and they are separated into six main elements. 
Headquarters, A Squadron for Special Air Service, B Squadron for Special Air Service, D Squadron as the Commando Squadron, E Squadron as the Explosive Ordnance Disposal Squadron, and the Support Squadron. Some of their more notable achievements in recent years include the formation of Task Force 81 in Afghanistan to direct counterinsurgency operations, rescuing downed airmen in hostile territory in Kuwait on Operation Griffin, and humanitarian and security support in East Timor. Number 17. Border Guard Group 9 Border Guard Group 9, also known as GSG-9 Der Bundespolizei, is a West German border patrol unit and federal police unit established in the early 1970s to manage terrorist situations. There are at least 175 men within GSG-9, including regular personnel, helicopter pilots, mechanics, and even a psychologist. Most personnel are trained to be specialists in explosives, healthcare, and documentation. Entering the GSG-9 is actually much more straightforward than you might think, as in, it's not so elite that you have to be invited in. If you're in the regular police force, you can volunteer to enter the special unit and start a 22-week training course. This training course teaches you about different weapons, including foreign ones, how to shoot in various conditions, karate, and instructions in criminology, law enforcement theory and practice, and psychology. You even get to learn how to parachute, with training taking place inside aircraft and at airports. In most situations, GSG-9 is called upon to help in kidnapping cases, terrorism, extortion, hostage-taking, and high-risk arrests. Mostly, their services relate to serious and organized crime. In recent years, they assisted in raids to arrest people associated with the Reichsberger movement, which was suspected of plotting to overthrow the German government. They also helped to look for Jürgen Konings, the Belgian soldier under suspicion of far-right extremism, and were deployed to help with the 2016 Munich shooting in which an 18-year-old opened fire on teenagers at a McDonald's restaurant in Munich's Musach district. Number 16. Special Air Service Regiment Whether you call them the Snake Eaters, the Chicken Stranglers, or their official name, Special Air Service Regiment, you wouldn't want to mess with them. The Special Air Service Regiment, often referred to as the SAS, is an Australian Army Special Forces unit formed in 1957 and modeled on the British SAS. They are based in Perth, Western Australia, and are a direct command unit of the Special Operations Command. The Special Air Service Regiment mostly partakes in peacekeeping missions, particularly in operations around East Timor, Iraq, Borneo, Vietnam, Afghanistan, and Somalia. However, they are counter-terrorism experts and have also played a core part in security operations closer to home. They can do far more than your average police force. The expertly trained members of this Special Forces unit can play a part in hostage rescues, special reconnaissance missions, sensitive strategic operations, and much more. While they're skilled in warfighting and conflicts, they also pride themselves on their specialist counter-terrorist capabilities and counter-insurgency operations. Becoming a member of the Special Air Service Regiment is far from easy, and they have incredibly high personnel standards. In fact, it's believed that the selection process is the most demanding of any Australian Army entry test. Number 15. Shayatit 13. Shayatit 13 sounds like a band name or something, but it's definitely not. Instead, it's the name for a unit of the Israeli Navy, one of the central reconnaissance units the Israeli Defense Forces has. This unit mainly specializes in counterterrorism, maritime intelligence, sea-to-land excursions, sabotage, and maritime hostage rescue. However, they're trained for sea, air, and land action. They're so versatile, they've been involved in all significant Israel wars. If you've never heard of the Shayatit 13 before, don't beat yourself up about it. It's believed that they're one of the most secretive units of the whole Israeli military, and most of their missions and members are highly classified. But uh, let's put it this way, they're comparable to the US Navy SEALs. They're just that good. Training for Shayatit 13 is intense, and most people who apply won't get to join. The training process lasts an incredible 20 months, and it's believed to be one of the most challenging courses associated with the Israel Defense Forces. There's a selection camp twice per year that involves four days of physically and mentally grueling exercises. It's so intensive that psychologists and doctors are
are always on hand to help. Few actually pass this phase, but if they do, they participate in six months of basic and advanced infantry training before a further three months of training to learn maritime warfare, parachute training, weapons training, small vessel operations, forced marches, and more. Shayatet 13 is not for the faint of heart. Number 14. Snow Leopard Commando Unit the Snow Leopard Commando Unit, which used to be known as the Snow Wolf Commando Unit, is a police tactical unit within the People's Republic of China. They are under the People's Armed Police and were established to assist with many severe and dangerous situations, such as riot control, counterterrorism, hostage rescues, bomb disposal, and counterinsurgency. Their former name, Snow Wolf Commando Unit, was given to them because of how Arctic wolves can survive and thrive in harsh conditions. The Commando Unit unit got the same name because of its members' resilience in the same kind of situations and environments. The Snow Leopard Commando Unit was secretly established at the end of 2002, and they trained in complete secrecy and out of the public eye for five years. The unit, along with the Beijing SWAT, was unveiled to the public in 2006 at the Beijing Police Academy in PR efforts to show that the People's Armed Police are capable of handling terrorism, law enforcement, and delegate protection. Protection. Since their establishment, they've assisted in law and order at the 2008 Beijing Olympics and even participated in anti-terrorism exercises with Russia. As they're tasked with some pretty important jobs to do, like special operations, urban warfare, cold weather warfare, and counterterrorism, training is rigorous. To be eligible, you must serve in the People's Armed Forces for at least one to two years before undergoing many interviews and physiological and physical tests. Those who are selected must must undertake intense physical training, driving training, and weapons training. Just to give you an idea of how intensive it is, part of the physical test involves carrying 77 pounds of weight on a 6.2-mile cross-country run. Number 13. Grupo di Intervento Speciale the Gruppo di Intervento Speciale, often called the GIS or Special Intervention Group, is the Italian Carabinieri's Special Forces Unit. It was formed in 1978 as a police tactical unit and evolved to take on a special operations role in 2004. These days, the GIS is known for playing a massive part in counterterrorism operations, dignitary protection security, and protection in war. They are also called upon for hostage rescues and resolutive intervention against hijacking. The GIS has even made a name for itself as being efficient and well-prepared, and this has served them well as they enter challenging areas like the Horn of Africa, Afghanistan, the Balkans, and Iraq. You can typically find a GIS presence anywhere Italian diplomatic offices are in danger or at risk. While they're not a well-known special forces group throughout the world, they've been involved in many war operations in both a peacekeeping and war capacity. As far back as 19 1982, they went to Lebanon for investigation and protection activities. More recently, they've been in Afghanistan for special operations against insurgents. They also helped capture the Sicilian Mafia boss Matteo Messina Donato in 2023 and defended the Italian embassy in the Ukrainian capital. Number 12. United States Army Special Forces the United States Army Special Forces, or Green Berets, are the United States Army's Special Operations Force. They've been in operation since the 1980s and provide many helpful services, such as counterterrorism, counterinsurgency, unconventional warfare, security force assistance, special reconnaissance, and so much more. If they can't do it, it's not worth doing. They even get called upon for secondary missions, such as hostage rescues, combat search and rescue, peacekeeping, manhunts, and humanitarian assistance. They are the jacks of all trades. Alongside having to be experts in all these areas, the units also have to learn a foreign language during their training to work with foreign troops, and they must have an in-depth knowledge of the cultures, politics, and economies of the countries and regions they operate in. As you might imagine, becoming a member of the Green Berets is challenging, and you must be psychologically and mentally fit. You must be an existing member of the United States Army and meet a whole host of criteria, like being between 
between 20 to 36 years old, passing physical fitness tests and meeting height and weight requirements, and being qualified for a ranger school or airborne school. Once you make it into the Green Berets, you'll be required to train throughout your career to keep your skills sharp. Number 11. Marcos Marcos, which used to be known as the Marine Commando Force, is an Indian Navy elite special operations unit. They are well known for their special operations like direct action, special reconnaissance, amphibious warfare, and counterterrorism. Over the years, they've built a reputation for being exceptionally professional, and it's now believed to be one of the world's finest special forces units. And when you see just how many operations they've been involved in, you would assume that to be true. They're trained in all manner of terrain, which means they can go where they're needed. They played an integral role in Operation Pawan in 1987, which involved capturing the harbors of Trincomalee and Jaffna in Sri Lanka. They are also well known for when they stormed the Taj and Trident hotels in Mumbai during terrorist attacks in 2008. Operation Black Tornado resulted in terrorists being killed in action. More recently, they foiled a pirate hijack attempt on a vessel off the Somali coast, which resulted in nearly two dozen pirates being arrested. Most of the time, Marcos is incredibly secret. Their elite soldiers never reveal their identities, and most of their missions are not shared with the general public. Number 10. Joint Task Force 2 Joint Task Force 2 forms part of the Canadian Armed Forces. They are an elite special operations force and serve under the Canadian Special Operations Forces Command. They also work with other special operations forces worldwide, such as the SEAL Team 6, British SBS, British SAS, and Delta Force. They mainly handle counterterrorism operations in Canada and overseas, but you can also expect them to help with high-value missions like protective security, direct action, hostage rescues, and special reconnaissance. Although, you won't find too many details about what they get up to, since the government of Canada doesn't like to comment on such classified matters. But from what we do know about some of their missions, they are a force to be reckoned with. Joint Task Force 2 was sent to Bosnia to look for Serbian snipers who were known to be targeting UN forces. They were also sent to Haiti in 1996 to train local SWAT teams, advise President Rene Preval's security forces on how to repel the Revolutionary Army, and raid weapon smugglers. Around 40 Joint Task Force 2 soldiers were also sent to the south of Afghanistan when America declared war on terror after the September 11 attacks. Interestingly, the Canadian public wasn't told about their deployment. We don't actually know too much about what Joint Task Force 2 gets up to on a daily basis, but that's intentional. Number 9. Delta Force the 1st Special Forces Operational Detachment Delta, or Delta Force for short, is a United States Army Special Operations Forces controlled by the Joint Special Operations Command. They are involved in direct action, special reconnaissance, counterterrorism, and hostage rescues, and they've been providing a range of unique services since the late 1970s. Delta Force is made up of elite members of the Special Forces and 75th Ranger Regiment, but it's not uncommon for members to be selected from other other army units, and even other military branches. Essentially, they just seek out the best of the best. When members are accepted into Delta Force, they must undergo extensive training to learn marksmanship, demolitions and breaching, tradecraft, and much more. They even practice terrorist and hostage situations to prepare them for the real deal. This sets them up for success in many different situations and environments. While you can typically read a long list of activities in which special forces have been involved, that is not the case for Delta Force. Much of what they get up to is classified information. However, we do know that Delta Force members helped the 75th Ranger Regiment conduct raids on Islamic State leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi's compound, resulting in his death in 2019. Delta Force has also received many awards, which means they're doing some downright crazy and brave things in their line of work. Number 8. Unidad de Operaciones Especiales Unidad de Operaciones Especiales, or UOE, 
thank God, was the name of the Spanish Navy and Marines Elite Special Operations Force from the late 1960s until 2009. In 2009, they formed part of the Special Naval Warfare Force, operating under the control of the Admiralty and Special Naval Warfare Command. The UOE was usually involved with coastal, inland, and maritime special operations up to 30 or so miles from the sea. However, they were also known to operate deep inland, as required. They could assist with everything from maritime counterterrorism and combat diving and swimming to airborne insertion, combat search and rescue, direct action, and more. Because of the wide variety of missions they had to undertake, they had several naval and military equipment at their disposal, like airplanes, helicopters, inflatable boats, submarines, and frigates. Anyone who wanted to join the UOE had to be physically and mentally fit. After basic training, they would be required to undertake comprehensive medical, physical, and psychological exams before passing a selection course. Special training was also provided for combat swimming, mountaineering, hostage rescue, survival techniques, shipboarding, and much more. The training is so intense that the UOE training program has the highest failure rate out of all Spanish armed forces. Fortunately, this isn't a Hotel California situation. Once you enter training, you are free to leave at any time. Number 7. Special Boat Service Special Boat Service, or SBS, is the UK Royal Navy's Special Forces Unit. They've been in operation since World War II and have undergone several name changes until finally being known as Special Boat Service. While most of their operations are highly classified, which means we don't get to learn the nitty-gritty details, we do know that they're responsible for maritime counterterrorism. Their primary jobs relate to surveillance and reconnaissance, and they're often involved in information reporting related to airstrike directions, naval and artillery gunfire, and offensive action. If you were to compare the SBS to the SAS, they're actually quite similar. But the SBS has more training and equipment for leading maritime, riverine, and amphibious missions. As you might expect, training for the SBS is mainly about water, and you must have previous military experience to even be considered. Training takes place in England, and applicants must complete a range of grueling tests over a four-day selection process. These include combat fitness tests carrying 55 pounds over 8 miles within an hour and 50 minutes, a swim test of 1,600 feet in uniform to retrieve an object 16 feet down, gym tests, and more fitness tests involving running with heavy objects. There are believed to be at least 200 personnel in the SBS, most of which are experts in swimming, navigation, reconnaissance, diving, parachuting, and demolition. Number 6. J.W. Grom Jednostka Wojskowa Grom, which is usually just shortened to JW Grom, is the Polish Armed Forces Special Forces Unit within the Special Troops Command. When JW Grom was formed in the 1990s, they received training from the British Army Special Air Service and the U.S. Army Delta Force. So you just know they're the best of the best. Most people who know about them call them the surgeons because they have extensive medical knowledge and surgical-like precision when it comes to coordinating and carrying out special operations. J.W. Grom is mainly known for special operations and counterterrorism, and most of its activities are classified. However, we know that 40 men from J.W. Grom were deployed to Afghanistan during the War on Terror in 2002. They formed an integral part of the Naval Special Operations Task Group with the Navy SEALs and British Royal Marines during the 2003 invasion on Iraq. The types of situations J.W. Grom members must be involved in are often dangerous, which means not not just anyone can join. Weak applicants are filtered out in psychological, durability, and physical tests. Those who make it in are then trained in various disciplines like parachuting, sniping, special operations, and counterterrorism. About 75% of all Grom personnel are also medics or paramedics. Number 5. Special Services Group 
If you're a member of armed forces in Pakistan, such as the Pakistan Air Force, Pakistan Navy, or Pakistan Army, you might be eligible to join these Special Services Group, or SSG Commandos, as they're also known. The Special Services Group is the Pakistan Army's Special Forces Unit and is often called the Maroon Berets, owing to their headgear. Their primary missions are in unconventional warfare, direct action, foreign internal defense, reconnaissance, and counterterrorism. They also play an integral role in other areas, like manhunts, peacekeeping, search and rescue, and hostage rescue. They are jacks of all trades. It takes an extraordinary person to be up to the job of being an SSG member. Typically, Army recruiters visit Army headquarters and distribute pamphlets to officers. Your eligibility can depend on the school you'd like to attend, be it the Special Operations School, Frogman School, or Sniper School. The Special Operations School is undoubtedly the hardest to get into, with applicants being required to run one mile in no more than seven and a half minutes and perform 40 push-ups in one minute and 40 sit-ups in one minute. They must also be eligible for secret security clearance and have 20-20 vision. The intensity in the training program and strict eligibility criteria mean there's a high dropout rate in the very early selection stages. Number 4. GIGN the GIGN, or National Gendarmerie Nationale, is the police tactical unit operating under the National Gendarmerie of France. They're tasked with important jobs like targeting organized crime, surveilling national threats, counterterrorism, and hostage rescues. While they were initially created in the early 1970s as a small tactical unit for hostage situations, they grew into quite a large force with several responsibilities. Now, there are at least 1,000 operators within the GIGN, including 400 in the Paris area alone. Another 600 operate across 14 regional GIGN branches. The GIGN mainly handle operations in their own country, but as they form part of the French Armed Forces, they're often called upon for overseas missions. They've been involved in more than 1,800 missions and are described as one of the world's most experienced counterterrorism units. Like many special forces, their missions are secret, and GIGN IGN operators must not be in any public photos. Number 3. Sayeret Matkal the General Staff Reconnaissance Unit, which is often referred to as Sayeret Matkal, is the Israel General Staff's Special Reconnaissance Unit. It's also an important Special Forces Unit within the Israel Defense Forces. While they can help with hostage rescues and counterterrorism, their main focus is intelligence gathering behind enemy lines. Sayeret Matkal has been operating since the 1950s, but we didn't actually learn about them until the 1980s. Up until then, they were kept top secret. Their operations and capabilities are still top secret. Before the general public knew about Sayeret Matkal, people were handpicked based on referrals and personal acquaintances. Now, the unit is open to voluntary recruits, and there are grueling selection camps twice per year. You can expect to get next to no sleep during these camps, and doctors and psychologists have to be on hand to monitor the applicant's well-being. Once admitted, recruits will train for at least two years, learning about navigation, small arms, surveillance, camouflage, and even martial arts. There are also four months of basic infantry training, two additional months of advanced infantry training, and extra training for counterterrorism, parachuting, and long-range reconnaissance patrols. Number 2. Alpha Group Alpha Group is a subunit of the Special Forces of Russia established by the Soviet KGB in the 1970s. They now work within the Russian Federal Security Service. No one knows exactly what Alpha Group gets up to, but it's believed that they act under the control of the top political leadership in Russia and conduct black operations in and out of Russia. They must also be available for covert operations, police duties, and paramilitary operations. They occasionally make headline news, but generally after a successful operation. For example, they killed an armed man who hijacked a bus in Moscow in 1995 and freed a Swedish trade counselor kidnapped in Moscow in 1997. The Alpha Group was also involved in the 1994-96 First Chechen War and again in the Second Chechen War that started in 1999. They are certainly not a group you'd want to mess with, especially when they have access to powerful weapons like AK-74 assault rifles, submachine 
machine guns, light machine guns, and sniper rifles. Number 1. Navy SEALs the Navy SEALs are the main special operations force within the U.S. Navy and form part of the Naval Special Warfare Command. Their job is to conduct small missions in a range of challenging environments like mountains, deserts, jungles, the Arctic, and at sea. Most of the time, they're called upon to gather intelligence behind enemy lines and often to capture or kill high-level targets. The Navy SEAL team has played an integral role in many important wars and events, such as the Korean War, Iran-Iraq War, Persian Gulf War, Panama, the war in Afghanistan, and the Somalia intervention. They're chosen because the Navy SEALs really do consist of the best of the best. To become a Navy SEAL, you must pass many mental and physical requirements, and candidates can spend more than a year in formal training courses before being even remotely ready for life as a Navy SEAL. Typically, the training pipeline consists of eight weeks of naval recruit training, eight weeks of naval special warfare school, three weeks of BUDS orientation, 24 weeks of basic underwater demolition and SEAL training, five weeks of parachute training, and 26 weeks of SEAL qualification training. Oh, it's intensive, to say the least. You might already be scared about being on the wrong side of the law, but imagine how terrified you'd be if you met members of these special forces in person. You couldn't help but shake in your boots. Do you know anyone within these special forces? Are they as scary as they sound? Let us know in the comments. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.